Hi everyone. We're just waiting now for people to start joining. So get comfortable. Um, get ready to learn about Galapagos. All right. James. Hello, Kelsey. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. Great. How are you? I, I'm doing great as well. You know, very good. Comfortable, yeah. Um, I think we'll just wait a minute for people to start joining, and yeah, and then we can start. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, hi everyone, and welcome back to Galapagos Travel Center's Instagram Live series on the basics of the Galapagos Islands. Um, my name is Kelsey and I will be your host today for this live event on flora, fauna, and formation. Um, if you guys missed our last event on the intro to the basics of Galapagos, you can find the video right here on our IGTV, here on our Instagram page. You can also find it on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, or you can email us at info at galapagosislands.com and we will send the video directly to you. Now, before we begin this live event, I want to tell you a little bit more about our four-part series, if you weren't here last week when I told everybody else about it. Um, so the main goal of this series is for you guys to learn more about the Galapagos Islands. Um, last week, we covered the intro to the basics, where we talked about some general characteristics of the islands, the weather, um, when the best time to visit the Galapagos is, how to get to the islands, as well as the types of tours you can choose from in the Galapagos. Obviously this week we're talking about flora, fauna, and formation. And next week we'll be talking about the regions of the Galapagos and what types of things you'll see and do in each region that you choose to travel to during your tour. And then finally, in two weeks, we will be talking about the history, legends, and tales of the islands. So topics like Darwin, the first post office in South America, and even some pirates for those who love that like me. Um, we're really, really excited about this series, and we hope you get to learn a lot about the Galapagos over the next few weeks. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment them below, and we will answer them at the end of the event. All right, so let's get started. So here with me, we have a very, very special guest joining us, James, who is a certified Galapagos Park naturalist guide. Mm -hmm. We are so happy that you're here with us um, today, and do you want to tell everyone a little bit more about yourself? Hello everyone, I'm, I'm James Barreno. Uh, I'm a naturalist guy in the Galapagos Island. I became a naturalist guy in 2009. It means I have like 10 years uh, guiding and leading groups in the, in the Galapagos in the Galapagos Islands. Great, so um, how did you become a naturalist in Galapagos? Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the process and what you had to do to become certified? The National Park Service is in charge to certify all the guides in Galapagos. Mm -hmm. um, I applied for this um, for the job in 2009. Uh, 300 people applied for this uh, for this job to qualify to be a naturalist guide. Mm -hmm. It's very hard because we learn about uh, geology, botanic, human history of the Galapagos Islands, human history in general of Ecuador. So it's, it's eight months of very hard work of all these uh, all these people that apply but only 62 we passed the final test. Uh, I feel very proud uh, to be a naturalist, a naturalist guy in the Galapagos Island. Uh, the other reason um, I decided to be a guide because my mom is a park ranger and my dad is a naturalist guy too. So conservation and nature is I think in my family and in my blood. Great. Um, so we're really, really excited that you're here with us to share your experience as well as your knowledge about the islands. Um, again, I just want to remind everyone that's watching, if you have any questions during the event, um, please comment them below and we will answer them at the end. All right, so now let's really get started. Um, first, what are some important terms that um, we need to know about before talking about Galapagos flora and fauna? Um, the important terms to talk about Galapagos, the flora and fauna, uh, mm -hmm. number one, endemic. Endemic means that it's a unique species in the Galapagos Island with um, very cool adaptations to the islands. This species arrived to the islands uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Uh, we can think about the Galapagos penguins. Those penguins are the only ones that live in the, in the equator. 
Okay, the only ones they nest in the lava tubes. And when we see the penguins in Galapagos, you expect probably see hundreds thousand of them. But mm -hmm. the reason that is one or two penguins is because they have huge areas where they can nest. Um, they have a lot of food and the water, but the nesting areas are in certain islands of the Galapagos Islands. Um, mm -hmm. We always joke with our uh, guests when we see a penguin, look the penguin next to a cactus. So that means that is something unique to the Galapagos, to the Galapagos Islands. The other thing that you should note is native. Native means they arrive to the islands in a natural way, uh, rafting mm -hmm. in some vegetation, uh, and they adapt to the islands, but they don't, they, they don't change much. Uh, for example, the frigate birds. Frigate birds, you can find the frigate birds in the Caribbean, frigate birds in Galapagos. Actually, we have two of the five species uh, of frigate birds in the Galapagos Islands. The magnificent frigate birds and the great frigate birds, but both are awesome. Um, mm -hmm. The other term is uh, introduce. Introduce means arrive to the Galapagos by accident. Uh, for example, goats, the goats uh, represent uh, one of the um, introduced species and one of the worst introduced species that we have in the Galapagos. But thanks to the National Park Service, we have a very good uh, control of them. Of course, people come to Galapagos to see the endemic species. Uh, the ones they survive in Galapagos in these uh, this, uh, hard conditions. Great. So, um... What makes life so unique or interesting in Galapagos compared to other places in the world? The Galapagos Islands are surrounded by different marine currents, and these currents bring all the nutrients, food, creole, plantain for the marine life. And okay. the Galapagos Islands, they have very rich soil. Remember, Galapagos are volcanic, so we have a lot of minerals. Uh, the minerals, a lot of all the vegetation grow faster than the mainland Ecuador, grow faster because uh, the vegetation and the soil, it's very rich in nutrients. You have lichens that cover the trees. So the weather is perfect for the vegetation and the marine carbons bring all the nutrients for the marine life. So that makes very special and very unique uh, the conditions in the Galapagos Islands. Yeah, so definitely lots of different things working together to make Galapagos, like especially different, I think, than any other place in the whole world. The, the Galapagos Islands, they have a lot of different uh, areas, or a lot of different uh, vegetation zones. Uh, you can visit the lowlands and see a cactus forest, see some uh, vegetation with ton, uh, tiny little flowers. Then you walk for a couple of meters up hill, and then you find a different vegetation, more grass, more lush. And if you take a bus to the highlands, um, for example, Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz Island, you take a bus to the highlands of Santa Cruz, and in 20 minutes, you're in the rainforest. So yeah. the change is dramatic to see all the different vegetation areas because all the, all the weather is different in the south and the north of the archipelago. Yeah. So, okay, now on to, like, more specifics of the plant life. Um, in your opinion, what are some of the most important plant species that exist in the Galapagos? In terms of flora, um, Cactus are very important for the, uh, for the Galapagos Islands. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with cactus. We're yeah. used to see cactus in the desert. Or cactus, they get like two, three meters tall, like the sword cactus, uh, which is very common in North America. Mm -hmm. Or to see some of the cactus in the desert uh, on the south of Peru. But cactus in Galapagos provide the main resource of water and food for reptiles. I remember reptiles are the ones that arrived to the Galapagos uh, and they adapt very well to the islands, but they adapt in, um, in a vegetarian way. They're vegetarians. Yeah. They, eat, uh, they need plants. They need water to survive. And in the lowlands, cactus are everywhere. And the cactus provide good resource of water, uh, food, and shade. February and March in the Galapagos are the hottest months, and all these reptiles are less active, so they're hiding under the cactus. And remember, the soil is very rich in minerals, and the cactus can yeah. grow like 10, 12, 15 meters tall. So they're a giant cactus. We have the Opuntia, but this Opuntia is the Opuntia gigantea, the giant cactus. Mm -hmm. The other vegetation that is very important in Galapagos and um, mangroves. We have four different species of mangroves. The mangroves 
are they cover 36 percent of the galapagos land mass so we have mangroves in the south in the north west and east mm -hmm. of the galapagos islands and those mangroves are the perfect spot for the marine life yes. baby sharks baby rays baby turtles after the baby turtles hatch of their nest they run for their lives and the first spot to find is a mangrove area where they can hide and where they can spend the first two, three or five years of their life hiding and getting all the food and nutrients they need to, to survive in the Galapagos in the Galapagos Islands. So I think cactus and mangroves are very important for the Galapagos Islands, for the flora of the Galapagos Islands. Great. So let's move on to wildlife now. Um, so there's four general categories of wildlife in the Galapagos, which are marine life, reptiles, birds, and mammals. So let's start with marine life. Um, can you tell us more about some marine life that is unique to the Galapagos mm. and some of the most important species that for this ecosystem? The marine life, we have a lot of species in uh, the Galapagos waters. Remember mm -hmm. all these currents bring a lot of food uh, from uh, south and west and north and east. Uh, some of the unique yeah. species in Galapagos are the marine iguanas. Uh, the marine iguanas actually spend only two hours a day in the water, one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon, but they have a very cool adaptation to the islands. They eat algae, but all the algae is located like two, three meters uh, uh, deep. So these iguanas, <laughs> they go for a short swim, they spend up to 20 minutes eating the algae as fast as they can before the body temperature drops. The perfect temperature for iguana is like 27, 28 degrees Celsius. But once they touch water, the body temperature drops 10 degrees. So oh, wow. they eat all the algae. And they're very important for the Galapagos because they keep the algae very low, very short. So marine iguanas, it's a very unique species in the Galapagos Island. Um, another species, Sea turtles, sea turtles mm -hmm. eat algae as well. The sea turtles, you see this Galapagos green sea turtles. They're the subspecies of the Pacific green uh, sea turtle, but these turtles are much bigger. Mm -hmm. The Galapagos green sea turtles are very common to see in the west side of the Galapagos, of the Galapagos Islands. And we have sharks, we have different species of sharks. I know some people are afraid to swim or snorkel or even diving with sharks. And in Galapagos, we have the white deep rib sharks, the black deep rib sharks. We have their own species, the Galapagos sharks. They can get like two, three meters long. And yeah. So those are some of the species that we have in the Galapagos Islands. And the most common, the ones that you will see if you go snorkeling, you see the turtles, iguanas, and sharks. Remember the Galapagos Islands, they have 200 and nautical miles of marine reserve. Fishing is very well regulated in Galapagos. We have one or two fishermen catching one fish at a time. Uh, the National Park have a very good control of the marine reserve. So mm -hmm. here in Galapagos, we have a lot of fishes, a lot of colorful fishes, a lot of tropical fishes. Uh, you will be very, very impressed when you go snorkeling. And it's your first time, you will discover a totally different world. Yeah, wow. So. All right, what about reptiles? Um, can you tell us more about some of the reptiles that are important in Galapagos? Some of the most famous? <laughs> the most famous reptiles are the giant tortoises. The yeah. giant tortoises, I think, are one of the most uh, iconic species in the Galapagos Islands. Uh, we have land iguanas, they're very colorful. We have marine iguanas, they're very interesting. Uh, we have this uh, lava lizard, they're very cute to see the lava lizards climbing the walls. Uh, or doing some push-ups in person of the females when it's the mating <laughs> season. But the giant tortoises are very important for the Galapagos Islands because thanks to the tortoises, we have all this vegetation I was talking before, the cactus, we have all the trees in the highlands, we have all the small grasses and vegetation in between the highlands and the lowlands because the tortoises are in charge to spread the seeds. We don't have big land mammals in Galapagos, but we have giant tortoises. The giant tortoises are 100% vegetarians. Uh, they always follow the same migration route. When it's the mating season, the females walk all the way to the highlands uh, to reproduce with the males. They spend a couple of months with the males in the highlands, and then they walk all the way to the lowlands. And with them, they carry all the lichens, seeds, all the tiny organisms, and also they spread the seeds. 
So the giant tortoises, I think they're very important for the Galapagos, for the Galapagos Islands. So we have snakes in Galapagos, and it's very important uh, for you to know that the snakes in Galapagos, they're not poisonous. There's no poisonous snakes in the Galapagos Islands. The snakes are constrictor, constrictor snakes. So that means they, <laughs> they prey in small lizards, small iguanas, baby iguanas. Great. So speaking of the giant tortoises, I know in the news this week, there was some, there was a special announcement about a certain tortoise named Diego. If you want to tell everybody more about that and what, kind of what happened with that. Diego, uh, Diego is very popular in my island. I'm from Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz Island. Mm -hmm. And I uh, probably Diego now is popular all over the world because Diego uh, is responsible to increase the numbers of the tortoises in one island in Española. Diego is originally from Española Island. Diego was in captivity for many, many years in the San Diego, in the San Diego Zoo. But finally, the National Park Service decided to go Diego home to start a breeding program. And Diego was extremely happy because this time Diego was in captivity, but with 12 females. Mm -hmm. These 12 females belongs to Española. So that's perfect. Two tortoises uh, mating male and females, and thanks Diego, now we have 800 baby tortoises. So in Santa Cruz Island, we call him Super Diego, or Diego the yep. Professor, because Diego <laughs> was mating with all the females, and now we have our last hope to recover the whole ecosystem of one island, which is Española, because Española Island need Diego and all the babies and all the females to spread the seeds around Española, es Española Island. So Diego is now at home in Española. I think, uh, I, I think uh, the Rangers released Diego like a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah. Diego was set free finally after years and years and years of captivity, finally back in his home of Española. So that's really, really exciting news. All right, yeah. so now let's talk about some famous Galapagos birds. Um, what are some important things to know about them? The birds, we have a lot of birds in Galapagos. It's very yeah. difficult uh, to choose one or two, but I think one of the most popular are the blue-footed boobies. Everybody wants to see these blue-footed boobies. The birds, they have a blue feet. Uh, the best time of the year to see these boobies doing the dance is mm -hmm. in February and March. And the blue footed boobies, they have a very colorful feet, especially the males. When it's the mating season, males do the dance to impress the females. And that is a perfect example of uh, sexual selection uh, by mm -hmm. color. So the females choose the best dancers with the bright blue <laughs> feet. Uh, so blue footed boobies, uh, another species that is very colorful and they have very interesting courtship are the frigate birds frigate birds, and the same time of the blue-footed boobies, February and March. You can see these two species during the, the dance or the courtship in February and March. Frigate birds inflate the red membrane to attract the, the females. So, so I think those are the species that they're very popular. Boobies, frigate birds, we have uh, pelicans, uh, we have the brown knotty terns, we have tropic birds. And around the archipelago, you will find different species. But one that is very unique to the Galapagos Island mm -hmm. is a flyless cormoran. A flyless oh. cormoran is a flyless bird. Penguins, I know, penguins is another flyless bird. But the cormorants are only found in the Galapagos, in the west side of the islands. And mm -hmm. it's very interesting how these birds are uh, nesting and the chicks are practicing and learning how to fly. And after a couple of weeks, they realize they're flyless. It's very sad, but then you see them jumping into the water, going for a uh, short time fishing, and then they bring an octopus to the uh, surface. They bring a seal chain to the surface. So they're terrific fishermen. So that means mm -hmm. they're that very well to the islands. And they stop flying for the simple reason that is no predators, and they have plenty of food and the water. Yeah, so I think definitely, if you, even if you're not a bird person, there's so many birds in Galapagos that you'll find one that you will is your favorite it's a lot it's a lot of birds that we have in galapagos islands and it's something uh very interesting that they're not afraid of humans uh you can uh, be mm -hmm. this close like uh to a blue footed booby doing the dance to a frigate bird trying to attract the females or a flyless yeah. cormorants fishing so that is i think the best part that you don't need those big big cameras or very very strong binoculars with an iPhone, with a phone, you can take a very good picture of these Galapagos uh, flora and fauna. 
definitely. All right. So lastly, let's talk about mammals. Um, probably we'll spend most of our time talking about one mammal in particular that is everybody's favorite. So um, let's talk about it. Uh, let's think about the sea lions. You know? yes. Sea lions. <laughs> I think there's tons of videos of the Galapagos sea lions in the internet. Uh, Galapagos sea lions are very friendly and playful. Mm -hmm. My favorite activity is snorkeling. I love to snorkel because every time that I have an encounter with a sea lion, sea lions come to me, they bite my fins. Sometimes people are afraid <laughs> of the sea lions. They say, look, the sea lions are like sea dogs. Just keep in your mind, sea lions are like sea dogs. They love to play. So sea lions, uh, they're very inquisitive. The sea lions, the Galapagos sea lions, because these are a unique species to the islands, uh, love to play, uh, love to interact with people. If you see uh, or if you visit a sea lion colony, the sea lions are very photogenic. So probably you will have like two, 3,000 pictures of a sea lion at the end of the cruises. <laughs> of the visit in the Galapagos, in the Galapagos Islands. Uh, the sea lions came from California, or from the North Hemisphere, uh, about 400,000 years ago. The sea lions are very well adapted to the islands, are very good fishermen, and they don't compete with the local fishermen because they have the other mm -hmm. feeding areas. Um, the Galapagos sea lions, usually they have one baby sea lion, and those baby sea lions are very cute. I think the sea lions are the cutest, uh, animals or species in the Galapagos when they're babies. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So let's move on to a different topic. Um, how the islands were formed. So can you tell us a little bit, maybe like a short summary about how, how this happened millions of years ago? Galapagos Islands are 100% volcanic. That means they've never okay. been attached to the mainland Ecuador. The origin of the islands is located in the west where we have the hot spot, and the hot spot um, is responsible for all the volcanic activity. So in the last 200 years, we have more than 50 uh, big volcanic eruptions, and those volcanic eruptions create the islands. The youngest islands are located in the west, Isabela Fernandina, and the oldest islands are located in the east, Española and Floriana. Uh, Santa Cruz is a middle-aged island, Santa Cruz Island is right in the middle of Española and Isabela, Isabela Island. Mm -hmm. And all these islands and small islets and rocks, all of them are sitting on a huge tectonic plate. The name of the tectonic plate is Nazca, like the mm -hmm. Nazca Lines, or the Nazca Culture in Peru. And the Nazca Plate is moving five to seven inches southeast. So that is the reason that all the islands, they have a different volcanic age, because every time that we have a volcano that emerge. Uh, for the seafloor, that island push the island, and the next island, and that's the way they keep pushing all the islands to the south, to the southeast. So basically, the islands they have a volcanic origin, and the hot spot is still active. Every five, every five years, it's not a rule, but every five years we have a volcanic eruption. The last one was one year ago, uh, okay. in 2015. We had a big volcanic eruption. 2009 in Fernandina, 2005, 2000, 1995. So you see a connection that every five years we have volcanic eruption. Great. So we should be expecting a big volcanic eruption sometime soon, maybe. <laughs> maybe tomorrow, maybe in two weeks. So uh, we're expecting a volcanic Surprise. eruption. Surprise. Yeah, yeah yes. definitely. So I think that pretty much covers the basics of flora, fauna, and formation. Unless you have anything else that you would like to add right now. The Galapagos Islands, uh, they're, very, uh, they're very interesting uh, area to visit. Uh, mainland Ecuador, Galapagos, all they have a different ecosystem, different flora and fauna. But something that makes very special the Galapagos Islands is all the endemic species. Their species are not afraid of humans. The species, they're, they're very colorful, they're very friendly and playful. And something about Galapagos is the Galapagos Islands are a very peaceful place where you will enjoy these nature walks. Uh, if you're not a bird watcher, for sure you will enjoy taking pictures of Lou for the movie. If you're not a good swimmer, you will enjoy swimming or snorkeling with the Galapagos sea lions. If you don't have experience diving, the first time you jump into the water and you see all these different species of fish, you will uh, find and discover a different world. So every time in Galapagos, Every day you will see something different in the islands. Yeah, that's wonderful. It sounds 
it's just I think the perfect place in the world to visit um yeah so um let's answer some questions that you guys had earlier okay um, first question have you been able to go to the reserve during this time and has there been any change in fauna or flora during the lack during this time because there's a lack of tourism um right now the national park is closed but um, they're talking about to open this national park in the fall uh, weeks or maybe next mm -hmm. month. Uh, but I'm very sure that I will find uh, all all different. Now the vegetation grow faster without people. Uh, I'm pretty sure the sea lions and iguanas probably will clean a, a different area of the island. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm just waiting. Uh, I'm very excited to back to the Galapagos Islands and take the groups over there because. I remember one case in particular, uh, North Seymour Island was closed for about two months because the rangers were running a conservation program on mm -hmm. Seymour Island. And after just two months later, the vegetation grew like like crazy. It was all covered with the vegetation. It was hard to find a trail because they were all covered with vegetation. Um, blue footed boobies back to the areas where they used to <laughs> nest. Land iguanas, now we're in a different areas, um, eating more cactus, so that means the cactus recover faster. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I saw something different, no? Even the water was much clearer, you know? so I'm very <laughs> sure that I will find something different over there, yeah. Definitely. That's crazy, but I mean, humans not ruining things happens. Yeah. All right, next question. Um, why did the iguana evolve to be marine? So marine iguanas, why are they now swimming in the water? Okay, marine iguanas eat, uh, they eat algae. Uh, the iguanas arrived from Central America. The iguanas, mm -hmm. uh, they used to be green iguanas. Once they arrived to the Galapagos, not much vegetation, maybe some cactus. So that is the reason that some iguanas involved in a land iguana. Uh, but at some point, there's too many land iguanas. So they were just waiting, probably watching the ocean. Every, uh, every eight hours, we have low tide and high tide. Boom, they discovered there was a whole bunch of food available for them underwater. So mm -hmm. uh, Iguana decided to go for a short swim. Then they learned <laughs> how to slow their heartbeats. Uh, this is a unique for the marine iguanas. Usually they have 60 to 70 heartbeats per minute. But when the iguanas are ready to swim, they slow their heartbeats to eight heartbeats per minute. This wow. happened in nine million years. So if you go to the islands to take a picture of iguana, you will take a very good picture of a nine million years of evolution. So I think that is the reason <laughs> the iguana is involved in a marine iguana, because the food supply is more algae for the iguanas underwater. And it's a lot of cactus for the land iguanas. But imagine if you have just land iguanas, too many competition for all of them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, next question. How important is uh, the Galapagos National Park for the conservation of the archipelago? The Galapagos National Park is in charge to control and regulate all the activities in Galapagos. Uh, thanks to the Galapagos National Park, we have guys, they lead the groups. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to the National Park, the fishermen, they have a season to catch the lobsters, they have a season to catch the fish. In other ways, you will have overfishing in the Galapagos. No food for the sea lions, no food for the sharks. So the Galapagos National Park are running all the eradication program of introduced species. Sadly, those species arrived to the islands before the national park, like goats, rats. We have like a top 10 of the most aggressive and invasive species to the islands, but the mm -hmm. national park reduced now that list to five species because wow. they have a good control of the other ones. So that important are the national park for the islands. Wonderful. So next question, are whale sharks ever seen in Galapagos? The best time of the year to see the whale shark in the Galapagos is from uh, October to December, or first weeks of January, but mm -hmm. in the northern side of the islands, Wolf and Darwin. And Wolf and Darwin are only diving, diving sites. So if you're a diver, I highly recommend to visit Wolf and Darwin uh, in July is for the hammerhead sharks. So if you're interested in hammerhead sharks to see the biggest schools, right now we have the uh, diving season and the hammerhead shark season. Great. So I think that pretty much covers all of the questions. Um, I wanna thank you guys for all joining us and a big, big thank you to James 
for all your help and giving us tons of great information about flora, fauna, and formation in the Galapagos. I know we just covered the basics of the topic, uh, but if you want, guys want to learn more, you can join us next week when we talk about the regions of the Galapagos Islands, where we'll talk more about the species you can see and the activities you can do in, each, in which islands. And then don't forget, in two weeks, we'll be talking about the history, legends, and tales of the islands. And if you guys have any more questions or you'd like to talk more about something, you can live chat with us on our website at GalapagosIslands.com. Or you can email us at info at GalapagosIslands.com. Or you can send us a message right here on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, thank you guys so much again for joining us today. And we hope to see you ne again next week when we talk about the regions of Galapagos. Bye. Bye. Thanks, James. <laughs> Bye.